The preservation of the developmental biology film series was made possible by generous contributions from Distinguished University Professor of Geosciences, Lynn Margulis Terence Malick Chelsea Green Publishing The Politics and Practice of Sustainable Living The Hardy Lane Foundation the International Symbiosis Society. Geobook Studio, publisher of The Biggest Picture. Hummingbird Films, producer of the documentary Symbiotic Earth. And supporters of the Lynn Margulis Archive at ScholarWorks. The derivatives of the skin, such as hair, nails, scales, feathers, and down feathers, are hardened and dead structures when fully differentiated. However, each begins its course of development as living cells. The down feather begins its development in a series of unseen interactions between the two primary tissue layers of the embryonic chick skin. The epidermal layer provides the cells which make up the finished feather, while the underlying mesodermal layer serves as a temporary internal framework which contains tiny blood vessels that feed the growing structure. One of the first events of feather development is the aggregation of mesodermal cells into clusters. These clusters induce the overlying epidermis to proliferate, thicken, and elevate. The morphological changes which take place within the developing skin can be studied by observing a piece of translucent embryonic skin taken from the back of a chick after seven days of incubation. The skin is explanted to a plasma clot, which contains nutrients required by the developing tissue. At this stage, it is visibly undifferentiated. Time-lapse microcinematography shows that within a day of explantation, a reorganization of some of the cells in the mesodermal layer takes place. The cells actively migrate and aggregate to form condensed clusters. Differences among feathers and feather tracts are determined by the cells of the mesodermal layer. In response to the condensation of cells in the mesoderm, the overlying epidermis begins to thicken by local cell proliferation. At the same time, the mesodermal cells push upward into the growing mound of epidermal cells, creating a mesodermal pocket. Soon, a small outgrowth of a roughly cylindrical form appears. The cortex of the cylinder is made up of epidermal cells and the core of mesodermal cells. As development progresses, the epidermis continues to yield new cells and thickens radially. Cell divisions occur primarily at the base of the feather in the column of epidermal cells. 
The process, like one which adds new floors to a rising skyscraper in the basement level, rather than on top, results in an elongation of the feather. As the back feather grows out, it points distinctly to the rear, bending near the base so that it lies flat on the skin. Here is a schematic section of the down feather, taken about midway between the base and the tip of the feather after about 15 days of incubation. To accommodate the large number of new cells, the epidermis of the feather has been thrown into folds, which point into the mesodermal core. At the apex of each fold, large cuboidal cells differentiate. These cells fuse into a longitudinal shaft, which is the barb of the down feather. At various levels, cells at the outer side of the barb shafts fuse to form barbules. Each barbule consists of a train of single elongate cells. The barbules point upwards and lie close to the barb as the branches of a lumbody poplar lie close to the trunk. In this drawing of a fully developed down feather, we can see that the barbs join at the base to form the short rachis. Each barbule joins a barb shaft somewhere between the top of the rachis and a point a short distance from the barb tip, which is free of barbules. The cylindrical developing down feather is completely surrounded by a sheath. Normally, this dries and splits off at hatching, or it may be rubbed off, allowing the feather to splay open. This down feather was plucked from a chick embryo after about 19 days of incubation. As the feather becomes fully differentiated, the mesodermal core dries up and retracts, and cells of the cortex not incorporated into barbs or barbules, die and disappear. Finally, only the cells of the barbs and barbules remain, shown here in red. These dying cells become filled with keratin, a fibrous protein which is impervious to water when it hardens. By the time the chick hatches, all the cells of the down feather are dead, and the feathers which fluff out as they dry provide a temporary layer of insulation, which helps maintain a constant body temperature and a dry chick. In time, the down feathers are shed, being replaced by juvenile plumage. <laughs>